Hey guys, it's your girl T and I want to go ahead and shout out Diva Wine. Diva Wine and numerous people have been sending me this video. So if you guys haven't heard, Countess Vaughn, our favorite best friend. She played in the Parker. She played on Moesha 227. Um, she's just a phenomenal actress. She definitely brings it back to the 90s. But she's been going through a lot of really tragic things and she decided to come out and speak to it on Doctors. She's talking about how her hairline was basically destroyed from wearing lace front wigs. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the video clip now. It's about six minutes and then I will come back with the rest of my commentary. Even from a tender young age, Countess Vaughn has been a fixture on countless TV favorites such as 227 and Moesha. The latter launched the successful spin-off The Parkers, making Countess one of the first African-American females to land her very own sitcom. But the beauty and the dream would soon begin to unravel. It's crazy how one day everything's fine and the next thing, the simplest things can, can mess up your life. Working in the industry for so long, I've always had different looks, so I'm used to wearing wigs. In about 2004, my hairstylist introduced me to front lace wigs and I fell in love with them immediately. You have a full hairline. I was wearing it 24-7. Five years later, the drama came in. The red flag was the oozing from my ears, from my forehead, the whole nape around my head, the pus. It had a horrible smell. It was painful. I let this go by for six months. What I didn't realize was I, I, I had a bad reaction to the glue that I used to apply the wig. So my hair started falling out. I didn't want to make the connection with that. I mean, I was just like, come on, a wig, a wig can make you sick? No, no way. I went to a dermatologist, but he didn't let me know long term there would be any problems. Now I have discoloration. People assume, you know, do you have vitiligo? Anywhere where you would apply the wig and put tape on, I'm lighter in those areas. And I used makeup to cover it up. The skin under my eyes peeled because of the glue. The skin came off my ears. With the eyeliner, I'm literally drawing in my hairline. Because of the hair situation, I was embarrassed. It was just, you have to be at home and be bald. I, I had to go through this in order to teach my, my, my little one that you gotta love yourself before anybody else will. I had a bulb in there. I just wanted to look natural. Please welcome actress Countess Vaughn to the show. Because yeah. I think it, as, as women, we all share this hair thing. You know, mm -hmm. they, they try to tell us we're not our hair, but, you know, we, we are our hair. Oh, it, yes. It makes a big difference what style you wear. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much with the lace fronts, with wigs, you're applying the glue around... Around the edges, around the nape. Um, glue or tape. Mm -hmm. And what we don't realize is when we're doing this, when you're lifting it up, you're taking off a layer of skin each time. So and that's what happened. When you say you t so you you had to take it up to keep reapplying, like yeah, I or I mean, if you if you sweat or you know, it's just it's time. Yeah. To redo it. To redo it. Right. It's gonna lift. People in general ever say I've never obviously had a wig. I may need one though. <laughs> no. I may need one. <laughs> but no. um, but do you ever say like? Is this healthy or is this right? Or are you so excited because it's something? So that... excited. Yeah. Mm. That's what you go on, you know, especially being an actress. I didn't think about the health risks. And I don't think that most of us do think about the health risks yeah. when it comes to trying to look our best. Exactly. And... It was cute and cute now. Well, it all that and matter. it's important because you, by coming on this show bravely, Countess, you really are sending this message out to so many people. We're joined by hair restoration specialist, Dr. Amir Yazdan. And first off, how does this happen? Obviously, does the glue affecting the pores and then over time creating this huge infection? Well, yeah, it's the repeated trauma to the scalp. Like how she mentioned, um, every time you're putting the wig on and taking the wig off, you're putting traction, you're putting uh, pulling tension onto the scalp, onto the hair follicles. And it gets to a point where you start damaging the scalp so much, you damage the hair follicles so much that 
the follicles start to fibrose. They just start to die out. and they're Fibrose meaning scar. Scarring, scarring right. right. And they just kind of die out, and they, they slowly start, stop growing. And, you know, I had a chance to uh, examine Countess, and that's exactly what I've seen. I've seen the thinning. I've seen the receding of the hairline. And you, those are classic, classic signs. Is, you know, a lot of African-American women have... Uh, wigs or extension or weaves or whatever, braids particularly. Uh, one famous woman, I don't mention her name, um, I think she has traction alopecia because the braids have been so tight for so long that it's taken her, actually taken her hairline yeah, back. And, and you know what, even non-African American women, mm -hmm. we were talking before Everybody the show, works. I used weaves, extensions yeah. with those and tapes fusion, and doctor, the same thing. Traction alopecia, I lost a ton of hair. You have to be careful. So be careful is obviously the message, but for someone like Countess who has already undergone this quote unquote trauma, where does she go from here? Unfortunately, there's not a lot of good treatments for the discoloration, but we can do a hair restoration surgery where we take hair from the back of the head and we regraft it to the front. And as a bonus, when that hair grows out, it will actually uh, cover up the uh, discolored areas mm. and mm. give her a very natural looking hairline. I would love to do that. So I'd just like to say that, you know, it's amazing you've been sharing your story. This is amazing. something that it's really good for people to know about because it is something I see commonly. And with that being said, I'd like to offer for you a hair restoration surgery to help you get your hairline back and kind of get things back in, in place. Thank you. Yay! Thanks, Candice. Thank Dr. Van, thank you as well. You guys just watched the video, and I just want to say that I really admire Countess Vaughn for being open and honest and speaking on things that a lot of times women are too embarrassed to speak about. And one thing is our hair. You know, we all go through so much with our hair. You know, I've told you guys my hair journey, how I hated my hair growing up. No one ever taught me how to care for it. I thought, you know, having a perm was just a natural part of life. And then once I went natural, it's like, you know, it was just, it was so much freedom. It's like, I love my hair now in its natural state. I can never go back to wearing a perm. Now, as you guys know, I did used to wear lace front wigs, but as you guys know, I always ad advocated not wearing the tape and not wearing the glues. If I did have to glue my lace front wigs on um, for like a photo shoot or for something I was doing, I would only use spirit gum because spirit gum only lasts about, you know, three to four hours. You can't even sleep with it in with spirit gum. It comes off after a while. But a lot of these glues are very, very dangerous. And I remember the first time I ever tried the lace front tape because we like, you know, just tape it on. And I wore it for a whole day and literally my forehead was just white. Almost like when you put a band-aid on your finger and then when you take it off, how your skin's all shriveled and white. And That was my first time and my last time using tape. It pulled my baby hairs out. It did all that. And that was just one-time use. I did it one time and I'm like, nah, this ain't for me. So I don't understand how for six months she could keep doing that to herself for six months. All the while smelling pus stuff oozing because like I said after one time trying it with the tape and it ripped a bunch of my hairs out and my fucking forehead was all wrinkled and everything else that was enough for me to say now nah, I'm cool I, I can't mess with no strong glue no tape none of that a lot of folks wear wigs as protective styles to give themselves a break and everything else but you have a lot of folks out here who don't know anything about their hair they feel like if they have on a lace front or if they have on a sew-in that's it their hair is done they're good but what they don't realize is that they still have to take care of their god-given hair underneath you can't just get a sew-in and call it a day and this is a problem that's going on because now these wigs are more affordable now you can get a synthetic lace front at the at the uh, hair store for like 30 bucks so now people are just gluing this shit to their head. They're not maintaining their hair. And now you're having a lot of women out here with traction alopecia. You know, their hairline is gone. You have chicks whose hairlines start back here. I mean, it's really, really sad. You know, and I don't think this should be a platform for natural women to knock women who wear weaves or to knock women who wear perms. You know, I hate the whole hair debate. That's why I don't really do hair videos. That's why I don't get involved with the whole hair community. I can't stand the hair debate because to me, I feel like there's bigger fish to fry. I don't think naturals should feel like they're exempt to that because you have a lot of natural girls who have hairline issues as well. You have natural girls who pull their hair back too tight with the, with the headbands. Um, they twist their hair too tight when they do their twists, when they do their dreadlocks. 
So, you know, traction alopecia can affect everybody, not just girls who wear wigs, not just girls who perm their hair. Also, natural women can also be affected by traction alopecia. I make sure to rub, you know, peppermint oil and rosemary oil, you know, on my hairline every night. You know, every night I'm rubbing oils in my hair and giving myself a, a scalp massage. And you have folks who feel like they want to dictate how your hair should be. You know, I get emails all the time, you should lock your hair. I don't like when you wear your hair down like this. I only like it in the afro. You should pull your hair back. You should do this. You should do that. To me, as women, you should do to your hair what you feel the need to do to your hair. But with that being said, you also have to maintain and keep your hair healthy. I don't think anybody has the right to knock anyone for any style that they so choose. But at the end of the day, it should be about healthy hair care and being proud to wear your own hair. Okay, if you like to wear wigs, if you like to wear a weave, that's fine. But also be confident and comfortable enough to show your real hair. There's nothing wrong with our hair. There's nothing wrong with our hair texture. And we have to start loving what God gave us. You know, it's cool to take a break. It's cool to switch up your look. It's cool to use, you know, weaves as an accessory like a lot of us like to say. But at the end of the day, make sure that you're taking care of your real hair underneath all that weave. Underneath these lace fronts. Because it's not worth dying from. It's not worth getting an infection. You know, you, we had the story back in 2012 about the woman in UK who died from hair bonding glue. The hair bonding glue, you know, went into her scalp and it killed her. You know, a lot of these glues have, you know, poisons in them that we don't know. They're untested. Some people have to wear wigs because they have alopecia and they're sick and they're, you know, they're balding and, and everything else. So they don't feel confident without a wig on. So this is not to, you know, shame anybody who has alopecia or shame anybody, you know, who has a, a thinning hairline. Sometimes you have to wear a wig until you can get things back in order. But my thing is prevention is the best key. And we need to start supporting girls who are comfortable being themselves, who are comfortable wearing their natural hair. Let's stop putting all these women who have lace fronts and wigs and weaves on pedestal and acting like like that type of hair is the hair to obtain. I think we should start putting women who are just confident to just wear their real hair. Regardless if it's permed or if it's natural. If it's your real hair, let's start putting these women on a pedestal. Let's start giving them props. So that way young girls don't have to turn to wearing European hair. They don't have to turn to wearing Malaysian hair. They can just be comfortable wearing hair that's this texture. You know what I'm saying? That looks just like this. You know, so it, it, the whole situation is just sad. You know, and she's not the first celebrity. You know, we had Naomi Campbell when her pictures leaked out and you seen her hairline and her little BDBs and everything else. You know, it, it's sad and people say, well, that's a small price that you pay to be famous and, you know, that's a small price that you pay to, you know, to look a certain way. It's a small price, but is it worth it at the end of the day? You know, at the end of the day, is it worth it when you can't even look in the mirror because your hairline starts back here? To me, like I've always said, keep it simple. Being simple is the best way. I don't do a lot to my hair, and I'm fine with that. You know, I don't do a lot of extravagant styles because I don't like my hair to be pulled. I don't really wear braids because I don't want my hair getting thin. I don't want my hair falling out. So the most I ever do to my hair, I put my hair in two pigtails, and I twist it up at night, and then I also, you know, twist my bangs. And then when I get ready to wear my hair, I just untwist it, and that's it. You know, I just like things simple. I don't like a lot of complication in my life. I got enough shit on my plate. I don't want to worry about wigs and glue and, you know, don't want to worry about a bunch of mess. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like people should keep it simple. Make sure that you maintain your hair. You wash it every day, every other day. Deep condition it. Stay on top of your hair because at the end of the day, once you mess up your scalp, once your scalp and your hairline starts hardening and, and forming scar tissues, there's no, way for that hair, there's no way for that hair to grow back. Now, she's being blessed with a hair restoration and hopefully it'll work for her, but hair restoration doesn't work for everybody and it's also very expensive. I'll say it once again prevention is the best key don't just slap on a wig don't just slap on some tracks and call it a day take care of your hair so you don't end up in the same position as Countess Vaughn so anyways go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire situation how do you feel about Countess Vaughn coming out how do you feel about Countess Vaughn's story have you ever had an allergic reaction to hair glue um, have you lost your hairline from wearing lace front wigs or you know sew wings or really really tight braids so let me know your thoughts all right this is